Because once you grow up in him, when the enemy shows up, it sticks out like a sore thumb. You cannot say you don't know that person has a spirit, is depressed, is full of grief, full of sorrow, it's full of darkness, it's full of addictions, it's full of whether it be drugs or alcohol or even today our popular pharmaceutical. That's why it's so important for you to understand where we're headed. Do you know the name? Remember that gal that sang that song, Do You Know the Way to San Jose? And man, it became a dynamic song. Then later she became a phone call that you would call the psychic hotline. And her name was Dion Warwick. Warwick, you know. Warwick, like, uh, yeah, anyway, so you got to understand a lot of things have been transpiring and settled into your makeup, spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotions. It has captivated us where we have used new age terminology and we erase scriptural terminology because we don't want to study. So it's a lot easier to bring the uh-huh, the new age terminology of God conscious. Let's all be God conscious because the kingdom of God is at hand. He said repent. The word repent takes you all the way back to the word Toshiva, which means to repent as going all the way back to dust, going back and refurbishing, going back and bringing back the original thought of yesterday, today, and forever. Was he not the creator of the universe? Was he not the creator of mankind? Was he not the creator of the sun, moon, and stars? Was he not the one that flung the stars and called them by name? Is he not the one that spoke the waters into being and he said you shall not go over this measure? Was he not the one with a spittle from his eye created all the valleys and all the mountains wherever they're seen? Why? Because he was the creator. He used emuna to exercise the word and create it to be active and quick and powerful, dividing asunder the solical realm, nefesh or suke, from the pneuma, the pneumaticos man. I know these are terms that you probably never heard, but true apostolic terms, they restore his original name yesterday, today, and forever would be Yahuwah, Yahshua, Hamashiach. And they will give you terminologies that you haven't heard, but they're in the scripture. You'll find what I just said out of Romans, out of Galatians. But here we are again. We're moving in such a quick order that we're, we're moving on. And, and you have to see, we, either we're followers of Mashiach or we're followers of all the dainties that man has given us to sweeten us up as they produce and promote a God spell over you to receive your monies. See, I'm telling you truth. The truth that I'm conveying will break the bondage of the yokes that men have created. And they have fluffed it and buffed it and shined it and clothed it with purple, with scarlet, and made it look so beautiful that you thought you were putting on a cloak of many colors that had to do with the covenant promises of your heavenly father. But it was the Babylonian whore speaking words of enticement. They, they, got, they went beyond your hearing and they began to tickle your ears. So now when you start hearing sound doctrine, you just swayed and kind of walked away from sound doctrine and you moved closer to the doctrine that was tickling your ear and you, ooh, I like money and they're talking about money. I like furs and they're talking about clothing. Ooh, I like uh, uh, fresh beverages and they're talking about thirst. Uh, and here we're having a famine for the hearing of the word. Not a famine of water, not a famine of bread, but a famine of hearing the word. Some, some of us got to understand what's going on, so let me read on. Therefore, the followers of Messiah make up the assembly of the Almighty, while the church is a body of worshipers of pagan deities. Oh, come on, say that again. I will. 
Therefore, the followers of Messiah, Mashiach, make up the assembly of the Almighty, while the realm of the church is a body of worshipers of pagan deities. The sad thing is that people who sincerely desire to have a personal relationship with the Creator through His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, worship pagan deities because they're apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. The fivefold ministry is still holding on to the paraclete or the the crippled par. Uh, what's the term? Um, you, you, there's there's uh, you, when you're totally paralysis and and you're um, oh man, it's a medical term. Uh, anyway, you're you're crippled from the neck down, so your head can move. You can see all that. And, and so there's a, there's a term there that I wanted to say, Josh, if you can help me. Uh, but anyway, so now the head, Yeshua HaMashiach, we may call him Messiah. But the head is still moving. The head is speaking to the Father. And the head is saying, Father, they're not willing to submit to the, my words. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I haven't changed. Somehow they've been mistreated. Somehow they've been denied. They teach on the rapture. They teach on the new wine skins and the new wine, but they haven't, uh, they haven't poured themselves out from one vessel to the another. So their drags still smell the same. They're still teaching religious traditions of men, but they think because they've gotten a new revelation, but revelation without relationship is in imitation of the relationship and so there there is a oh it's a it's a term it's a term where the head moves but the whole body is paralyzed okay so holy, uh, holy, holy yeah something holy. like that anyway let's just keep it there if you understand a little bit of what i mean so the head is moving the body needs to begin to connect with the head and i know it's hard for you that especially that have learned like i learned the name jesus christ lord he is jesus christ is lord but that was his natural name his true first the natural then the spiritual the spiritual name is yeshua hamashiach hallelujah that's why you got to read and you got to see and you got to study. Study to show yourself a proof unto Yah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on. The Creator through His Son worship pagan deity unknowingly because of the deception of Satan. But the thrilling thing is that now truth has come in these last days. Hallelujah. Truth are coming by vessels of honor that have been humbled by tragedy, humbled by pain, humbled by grief, humbled by torment, humbled by ab uh, abstinence, humbled by rejection, humbled by pride. You know, when you are so prideful, the, it says, this is what it says, but it's a good thing. Pride cometh before a fall. And we try to isolate and go, ooh, brother, watch out. But you're so prideful when you just said, ooh, brother, watch out. You're not sure what's going to happen. But the Father uses even pride in you and I to cause us to fall. Pride cometh before a fall. He doesn't want you to fall. He wants you to humble yourself willingly so that in the process of humility, you're being pressed. You're being crushed. You're being squeezed. You're being placed in the wine vat of Gethsemane. And the, our own master was squeezed to the point that sweats of drops of blood came from his forehead in the garden of Gethsemane. That's where he overcame the pain of the soul, the rejection, the pain of being split from his father, not feeling him where he felt them for eternity, but yet he was in a time zone. He came to the realm of, he descended to the realm of man for the season of three and a half years he ministered. 30 years, he, remember, he came out of his womb of his mom. Then he grew. Then at 17 years in the wilderness, being under governors and tutors, he learned. And then he came. He was exposed by the Father, Galatians 4. And he became, at the appointed time, he started manifesting, creating miracles, signs, wonders. Followed them that believed. Listen to me closely. Listen to me closely. Listen to me closely. Signs and wonders followed them that believed. 
Well, I believe and there's no signs and wonders exactly. You have to believe in the kingdom. You have to believe in the same name, yesterday, today, and forever. That's why there was multiple of miracles in the 30s and 40s, 50s and 60s, 70s and 80s, and then all of a sudden things dried up in the 90s and here we are in the 2000s. Why? Because the Father was bringing us down, 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 down to base zero. In the year 2000, when we came to the what the uh, all the scientists, uh, theologians, technicians, computer wizards, they said we're coming down to zero. We're gonna lose everything. No one lost anything, but you lost your identity. Now the Father brought all this stuff between us. You know the the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the prophet, the apostle. All of them were just spheres of Boom, suddenlies, 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 suddenlies. He brought us to base zero. The true apostolic is unifying with the book of Acts when the first apostles and prophets joined in the upper room, 120. As decades, centuries, and millennials went by, we're finally to base zero and the Father starts right there. First apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers. He's taking us back up. There's a graduation coming. There's an ascension order coming. We start with the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. The fivefold gets restored. After that comes miracles. Hey, signs. Hey, wonders. Hey, governments. All that takes place, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 and on. But right now the Father has us back to base zero. Apostolically, true apostles are restoring and reforming His name. And then true apostolic order comes and He begins to reform and restore His name. His apostolic, executing the apostolate, that's what Paul called it. You got to study the word. Go to 2 Corinthians, let me see, 10, 4 and 5. And you start doing an exegesis on those two scriptures and you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go on. So the scrolls of the original scriptures are being broken. And true apostles, true prophets, now watch this, true sons and daughters with salve that caused them to begin to see the scrolls. Uh, a scroll is a term, hallelujah, but the word is a scroll. The father broke the seal of his son and he began to speak his words. I speak not of my own. It says in the book of Acts, no, no, in the book of Mark, the people said we were amazed at his words for he was as a man speaking with authority. We haven't heard that before. And that was Yeshua, Messiah himself speaking. Let me read on. Hallelujah. The Father, for example, uh, states in the uh, God replacement theology. Let me go to the title. Replacement theology or replacing the theos. In Greek, theos means God. Okay? The Father, for example, the Bible states that the Lord God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. However, the Lord God, Baal Gad, is the Canaanite deity of fortune. Listen to me. The Canaanite de deity of fortune. The Canaanites even named a city after this deity. Joshua 11, 17, Joshua 12, 7, Joshua 13, 5. The Father would never be pleased in us calling him by names and titles of devils and demons. No matter what language we speak, G Isaiah 65, 11, 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Originally, the scriptures testified that the true creator of Shamaim and the earth is Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Elohim. His great name has been removed and replaced with the title of a pagan deity. Jeremiah 8.8 8. The Father knows our hearts. He examines our hearts to see what we... What, <laughs> he examines our hearts to see what we would do with the truth. 
that is presented to us. We should not take his name in vain, treating it as if it were nothing. Exodus 20, verse 7. Almost, Josh, Romans 10 and 13. Hallelujah. It does matter what we call him. We don't have to know any Hebrew in order to confess that Yahuwah is the creator of Shamaim, heaven and earth. The Son, the, the Bible also states that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is a relatively new name. It is not a translation of the Hebrew name of the Messiah. The scriptures originally testify that the Messiah, the son of Yahuwah, is Yahushua. This is the name that he was called by his parents, his disciples, and all who knew him, including people who spoke other languages. Acts 4.12, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, the Greek 24.24, Esus. Ha <laughs> ha, Esus, come on now family, Hebrew origin, H for Hebrew 3091, Yahushua, his true Hebrew name above other words, have been placed in the Bible posing as a translation of Greek and Hebrew words, when in reality they are the names and titles of pagan deities. Don't fall prey to the lie, go back to the truth and study it for yourself. The words described rituals performed to pagan deities. Some of these words include the word Lord, God, Christ, Holy, Grace, Glory, Faith, Blessed, Saints, and the list goes on of Latinized words to fake and break down the frequency of our Father. For those that are born of the Spirit are spirit, and the Father is a spirit, and in the last day they must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Until we meet again, Remember his name forevermore once again. Yesterday, today, and forever. Yahuwah, the Father. Yahshua, the Son. Until we see and meet again, may he bless you. Baruch you in Hebrew. Until we see each other. Shalom.